Hi everyone, welcome back to Silas Infotech. Today, we're diving deep into FortiGate firewalls, and I'll show you how to configure everything from the command line. Before starting, if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and click the notification bell icon. That way, you'll be the first to know whenever I upload something new. By the end of this video, you'll be able to achieve the following objectives using the command line interface, configure the hostname, configure the LAN interface and DHCP server, configure firewall policies, configure firewall addresses, configure custom firewall services, configure a static route, configure a custom NTP server, configure a DNS server, configure alert email so, if you're ready to level up your network skills, stick around, let's get started. In this demo, I'm going to use a FortiGate for OF, which has no prior configuration. Let's jump into the command line and configure a FortiGate from scratch. The first step is logging into your FortiGate firewall. Make sure the console cable is connected to both your FortiGate and your computer. You can also use SSH or Telnet protocols depending on your environment. But in this demo, I'll be using the console cable. Open the terminal software, PuTTY or TiraTerm. In step 2, we are going to configure the hostname. Let's start by customizing the hostname, which helps identify your FortiGate device in larger environments. Here's the command you need. Config system global set hostname. Your hostname simply replace your hostname with the desired name for your firewall, like 44OF. Once you enter the command, you successfully set the hostname. In step 3, we'll configure the LAN interface. Next, we'll set up the LAN interface so devices on your network can communicate through the firewall. Use the following command to begin. Then enter the IP address and subnet mask for your internal network. You can also enable management access, like ping, HTTP, HTTPS, and SSH, for remote administration. Next, let's set up the DHCP server. A DHCP server dynamic host configuration protocol server is a network server that automatically assigns IP addresses and other network parameters to devices on a network. This automation helps devices communicate effectively without needing manual configuration, simplifying network management, especially in large networks. To set up the DHCP server, you can use the following command. In this demonstration, I will set up the LAN interface. Follow these steps. 1. Set the start and end IP address. Define the range of IP addresses that the DHCP server can assign to devices. 2. Set the NetMisk address. Specify the subnet mask to define the network size. 3. Set the DNS server. Configure the DNS server address that devices will use for domain name resolution. 4. Set the default gateway. Ensure you set up the default gateway, which acts as the access point for devices to communicate outside the local network. This configuration ensures that all devices on the network receive IP addresses automatically, streamlining the network setup process. After successfully setting up the DHCP server, ensure that it assigns an IP address to the client computer. To verify this, follow these steps. 1. Open the network settings. Access the network settings on the client computer. 2. Disable and enable the network adapter. Temporarily disable the network adapter and then enable it again. This action forces the client computer to request a new IP address 
from the DHCP server. By following these steps, you can confirm that the DHCP server is functioning correctly and assigning IP addresses to client devices. With your network interface and DHCP server ready, let's configure a firewall policy to allow LAN traffic to access the internet. Before setting up a firewall policy, let's briefly understand what it is. A FortiGate firewall policy is a set of rules that control the flow of network traffic through a FortiGate firewall. These policies determine whether traffic is allowed or denied based on various criteria. Here's a brief overview. 1. Traffic control policies define which traffic is permitted or blocked based on parameters such as source and destination IP addresses, ports, and protocols. 2. Security profiles. They can include additional security measures such as antivirus scanning, web filtering, and application control to inspect and secure the traffic. 3. NAT and authentication. Policies can also handle network address translation NAT and user authentication requirements. 4. Stateful inspection. FortiGate policies are stateful, meaning they track the state of network connections and allow return traffic for established sessions. These policies are essential for managing and securing network traffic, ensuring that only authorized data flows through the network. Here's how to create the policy. In this demonstration, I will configure the source interface as LAN and the destination interface as WAN. The LAN will be set as the internal source IP address and the destination IP address will be set to all interface LAN. This is the internal network interface where your local devices are connected. By setting this as the source, you're specifying that the traffic originates from your local network. Destination interface WAN. This is the external network interface that connects to the internet. By setting this as the destination, you're specifying that the traffic is intended to go out to the internet. Internal source IP address LAN. This is the range of IP addresses within your local network. By setting this, you define which devices in your LAN are allowed to send traffic through the firewall. Destination IP address all. Setting this to all means that the policy applies to any destination IP address on the internet. This is useful for general internet access policies. Enabling UTM Protection Unified Threat Management UTM. This is a comprehensive security feature that includes various protections such as antivirus, intrusion prevention, web filtering, and application control. Enabling UTM ensures that the traffic passing through the firewall is inspected and secured against threats. as LSSH profile certificate inspection. This profile is used to inspect encrypted traffic. By setting it to certificate inspection, the firewall can inspect SSL TLS traffic to detect and block malicious content without decrypting the traffic entirely. Enabling NAT network address translation NAT. NAT is used to modify network address information in IP packet headers while in transit. Enabling NAT allows multiple devices on your local network to share a single public IP address for accessing the internet. This is essential for conserving public IP addresses and providing an additional layer of security. Service configuration HTTP, HTTPS, and DNS. These are the specific services you want to allow through the firewall. Now let's move the firewall address section. In a FortiGate firewall, a firewall address is an object that defines a specific IP address, range of IP addresses, or subnet. These addresses are used in firewall policies to control and manage network traffic. Here are some key points about firewall addresses, types of addresses. You can define different types of addresses such as single IP addresses, IP ranges, subnets, and fully qualified domain names FQDNs. Usage These addresses are used in security policies to specify the source and destination of network traffic. For example, you can create a policy that allows traffic from a specific IP range to access certain resources.
In a FortiGate firewall, a custom service is a user-defined service that specifies the type of network traffic based on protocol and port numbers. This allows you to create specific rules for traffic that isn't covered by the default services. Here are some key points. Protocol type. You can specify the protocol type, such as TCP, UDP, SCTP, ICMP, etc. Port range. Define the destination port range for the service. You can also specify source ports if needed. Application Category. Optionally, you can categorize the service based on the application type. Usage. Custom services are used in firewall policies to control traffic based on the defined criteria. In this demonstration, I will create a custom service for the submission port port number 587, which is used for sending emails on the mail servers. In a FortiGate firewall, static routing is a method where routes are manually configured and maintained by the network administrator. Here are the key points. Manual configuration, unlike dynamic routing, static routes are manually set up. This means you specify the exact path that network traffic should take. Default route, in its simplest form, a static route can be a default route that directs all traffic to a specific gateway usually for internet access. Use cases, static routing is often used in smaller networks or in scenarios where the network paths are predictable and do not change frequently. Reliability, since static routes do not change unless manually updated, they can be more reliable in stable network environments. An NTP network time protocol server is a server that synchronizes the clocks of computers over a network to ensure accurate and coordinated timekeeping. NTP servers use precise time sources, such as atomic clocks or GPS clocks, to provide accurate time to client devices on the network.
Domain name system server is a crucial component of the internet infrastructure. It translates human readable domain names like www.example.com to IP addresses like 192.0.1 that computers use to identify each other on the network. This process is known as DNS resolution. Without DNS servers, we must remember complex IP addresses to access websites. To configure a DNS server on a FortiGate firewall, you can use either the GUI or the C. LI. Here are the detailed steps for the command line interface. An alert notification is a message that informs you about important event or issues that require your attention. These notifications can be sent via various channels, such as email, SMS, or push notifications, and are typically used to alert administrators about critical events like security breaches, system errors, or configuration changes. You can use either the GUI or the CLI to configure alert email settings in a FortiGate firewall. In this video, here are the detailed steps for the command line interface. And there you have it. We've successfully configured our FortiGate firewall using the CLI. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more tech tutorials. Thanks for watching.